I've been doing game development for over two years at this point, and throughout that process you have those special finds, like some site or some spreadsheet or whatever that you look at and it's like, oh my god, a new world has just opened to me in terms of like, this is gonna be really helpful. And I've been sharing that knowledge through our Discord server already for a long time, which you should join if you're not in there and you wanna meet other game devs, but I figured I would also just make a video showcasing some of the best resources that I have found throughout my game development journey. These are not exactly tools, but these are more like very specific, like websites, like I said, or spreadsheets or whatever, that can help you tremendously in your game development process. And the first one is one that I actually discovered only a few days ago and which prompted me to make this video because it was just so good. And it's a site where you have like a browser game made by the lead developer of Dead Cells talking about game feel. Game feel is something that we talk about a lot and like a lot of game developers as well because it's this mythical thing that can make your game feel great and much more like juicy and much just better to play in general. It doesn't feel stiff, but it's something that is like how do I do game feel? What is it? What are all the things? You have like assets like feel, for example, that try to help you with it. But if you don't know what you exactly need to add, game feel is one of those things that can just be like there and you don't even notice it when it's good game feel. So what this site allows you to do is it's like a 2D platformer, but my God, goddamn, because it's made by the guy who worked on Dead Cells as well, it feels great. It has so much game feel. And it has like a menu where you can enable and disable all of the individual things about game feel. So for example, when there is a big impact, like you land from a platform, you get like staggered for like just a very short period of time, like only a few milliseconds. But it's enough to like give you a little bit of extra feel versus you just immediately keep moving and floating. And there are so many other examples. I think the list in total on that side is like 30 and you can really play around with, hey, this feels really good, this feels really bad and I want you to look at this and it's going to inspire you to look at your own game and be like okay what can I do like now to replicate that game feel. I think it's a great thing to just go through give it a go for like half an hour or so and then look at your game and see like hey actually this feels really boring let me add some more animation let me add some more impact whenever I'd like interact with something. Then this next tool is not exactly for game development specific, but it's something that I discovered when we were first marketing Forge Industry, our first game, and we had that Steam store page. But Steam has analytics built in, but they're not like the best in my opinion. And sometimes you're just wondering where do people come from to get to our store page? Like if it's like external traffic, what are those main sources? What are places that link to our store page? And that's where this concept of backlinks comes in. A backlink is basically any site that refers to your store page or our YouTube page or wherever. You need to be able to find out like, okay, what sites actually do this? You don't just want to Google like your game name and then have to meticulously click through every entry. No, there's a site called Uber Suggest by Neil Patel that can help you with it. You just put in whatever URL you want to get all of the backlinks for, and then you get this list of every single article where it was published and like the authority of such domain. It's like more of an SEO tool, but it can be really helpful for developers. And we actually learned through that site as well that our game got pirated. We made a whole video about it, you can find it there, because there were suddenly a lot of backlinks from piracy sites where they link to like, oh, this is the original game, if you want to like look at it there, that's like the Steam game, go and download the pirated version here. It's not the best thing to find out, but it's still very important. Now, the site, I'll be honest, it like it's trying to sell you stuff. Like Neil Patel, because it's like marketing, it's like trying to get you to sign up, but you can do up to three searches every day with a free account, which in my opinion, I think if you just need to get like an update on your store page, isn't a problem at all. And then this next resource was something that I encountered when we were working on Forge Industry, our previous game that we canceled. We wanted to localize it. So for Forge Industry, our first game, I painstakingly manually hand translated the entire game into six different languages. It was suffering. It was horrible. I would never suggest you to do that. So I was looking for better ways for Songs Ever Jade. And what I ended up finding there is a big Excel sheet called like Polyglot Game Dev, which is a crowdsourced giant Excel list of a lot of very common terms in game development and like video games translated to I think like over 15 languages where you can just look up like, hey, what is the term for continue or new game? And you can just use that. It's like industry standards. Whereas if you just put it in like Google Translate, it's not going to understand the context of, hey, this is talking about a video game. Now, let me hold you right there. You're gonna be like, oh, I'm an AI bro. Just ask ChatGPT. 
We also tried working with ChatGPT and I have mixed results about it. Often it would just like die along the way when I asked it for a lot of translations. And also still, once again, it had that same problem sometimes of not having the full context of this is a game. These are sentences that a gamer would use and not just traditional English. Yeah, you can prompt a little bit, but having some like polyglot, especially if you're making like simpler games, allows you to really quickly translate your game into a very big range of languages. And honestly, the more languages, generally, it does help somewhat in terms of getting more audience, getting more visibility. Like for Gen Industry, I think 15% of our audience is from Japan and then another 20% is from Germany. Those are audiences that we wouldn't have been able to capture as much if we never ended up localizing our game to begin with. Now, I'm going to take a quick break from the traditional resources. And I just want to remind you that we also have a great resource, not just this YouTube channel, but we also have a Patreon. I know I try not to plug this too much, but guys, it really helps me, first of all, to make sure that I can keep making these YouTube videos. And there is a shit ton of content over on our Patreon that is very in-depth and very advanced. Like if you like these videos, but you're like, I wish there was more in-depth because this is only like 10, 15 minutes. Every week we upload a longer, like 20 to 40 to even 50 minute long video often, just talking about things like Kickstarter breakdowns. Another video that I personally really think has a crazy amount of value is where I talk about publishing. How do publishers work? What are some things to keep in mind when you try to contact them? And also there's like an actual contract in there of a publisher with like notes of these are things you need to watch out for in your publisher contracts. Bunch of other content up there as well, like studio breakdowns for all of our financials. We do extra monthly Q and A's there. Honestly, all of the people on our Patreon, they don't regret getting it. So if you are looking for more in-depth content and you like the style of videos on here, definitely really go and check out our Patreon. And then another resource that I found originally throughout Forge Industries development is we needed a press kit. And there are multiple ways to make press kits. You could hard code it all yourself, which I would never suggest, or you could use something that is like a pre-populated template. Like there's a lot of press kits you'll notice if you like look at other games as press kits that are often a standard format. And that is because there was a tool press kit PHP developed a long time ago by Rami Ismail, but it's PHP. I don't really like PHP. There has been made an updated version of it called press kit HTML, which is just an XML editor that you can very easily like 15, 20 minutes or so, set up your own press kit. And it's going to help a lot when you're sending out, for example, emails to YouTubers to go and play your game, or you're reaching out to actual, you know, press like the name says it. And I made a video about it once, but it's kind of old. It never got that many views. It was before our channel really blew up. It can be interesting to check out, but I really wanted to give it another shout out. Also another tool that I found out, but I haven't had as much hands-on experience with is Press Kitty, where you can just put in like your store page URL and it already generates like 80% of a press kit for you. It hosts it for you and it's all free. They have like a pay tier if you want custom domains, but it can help you a lot as well if you really just want to get started very quickly and don't want to spend too much time on it. Having a press kit is always going to be good. I'm not a big fan of like websites for your game. I rather just have you make a press kit for your game and use that as your website because it's going to contain all of the necessary information regardless. This next one talks about accessibility. This is something that when we made a video about tier listing features, we got a lot of comments about where we talk about like, hey, rebinding controls, we don't know how important it is. A lot of people then came out of the weeds and were like, hey, no, actually, you need rebindable controls because it's great for accessibility. And I understand that like the more accessible your game is, the more also just people can play it. If you have like no colorblind modes, for example, or no rebindable controls, it is going to be harder. But for someone like me who is not disabled, maybe mentally for like being a game developer, but generally, I think I'm pretty okay in that regard. It can be hard to find out like, hey, what should I actually do to make my game more inclusive, to make my game more accessible to other people? And that's where I discovered the site Game Accessibility Guidelines, where you can just see like a list of everything you could do. And it's also sorted in like the impact and how difficult it is to actually implement. Because of course, certain things are gonna be much more work to implement if like one like screen readers or whatnot versus having rebindable controls. And it can be worth it there if you're like, hey, I want to make sure my game is accessible to get the low hanging fruit out of the way. But if you don't know what those low hanging fruit are, you can't solve them. Taking a read through the site can give you a good idea of these are some extra features that I need to add. Now, my opinion is don't do everything here. 
really only look at things that you are like, hey, I can confidently add this in like a few days of development time at most. Don't see this as scope creep where you need to have your game 100% accessible. It's gonna win you brownie points, definitely. It's going to have give you a bigger audience, but it's also probably not going to be the complete make or break difference of your game. So bear that in mind as well. And then the last resource I found is the game UI database. This is probably like one of the oldest ones that I originally saw when I was making the first UIs for Forge Industry. I pulled some of them up, they were very ugly. And it's a problem I see a lot where game developers, when they're starting on their game in like the first month, they don't even have like a game yet really they have like maybe a shitty prototype but they're like already working on their ui because ui is fun and it's rewarding or well it's not really fun but it's something that after a day of working on your ui you can look at your game and immediately see the difference whereas if you're working on mechanics that's not really a thing but the trap here is that you can often end up overcomplicating your ui and you're like reinventing the wheel and making a ui that just doesn't make sense once again Forge Industry had very clunky UIs because we didn't use this tool enough, which like I said, is the game UI database. It's a website that just has screenshots of so many games like AAA, indie, everything in between, old, new. And you can really filter on like, hey, I need to have a settings menu. And you can just get only screenshots of games and like how their setting menus look to get an idea of, oh, these are the general styles, or I need like a loading screen. How should my loading screen look? Or a health bar or a heads up display or whatever. And you can very easily get a lot of references. And you don't just have to assume from your own limited pool of experience, like, oh, whatever I make, it'll be fine. Who needs like standards? I'll just make my own standard and my own UI. Don't do that, that's what we did, it was dumb. So really, when you're working on your UI, just take a look at the game UI database. It's very quick. It's pretty easy to use as well and it is going to help you a lot in making prettier UIs. It's still going to be pain to make UI but that's just because it's UI in my opinion but this should make it easier to find a style for your UI. So these are some of the resources that I discovered along the way. You guys like how I like to call you as well like the hive mind always knows more than just me individually so if you have any good resources leave them in the comments down below as well. I'll probably like make a pinned comment at some point once I have enough pieces of like extra feedback where I just summarize all of your suggestions as well just to give you some more resources as well because these things like I said all of them have drastically improved how we make our games how fast I can like work on specific things. It just makes your life easier, but it can be hard because the internet is so big to find the exact tools. Anyways, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, be sure to head down below and subscribe as we upload these videos twice a week. And I think there's a lot of value in here. Like I said as well, if you want even more content, you can go to our Patreon as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.